Hello everyone, this is Victor Campos and I'm continuing my Android app development project. In the last video we loaded Eclipse. Eclipse is what we're going to use to write our code and deploy our apps to our devices, real or virtual. And again, Eclipse is found inside of your Eclipse folder in your ADT bundle folder. I've got mine loaded up and as I said before, mine's going to look a little different than yours. I've perhaps customized it a little bit and I've definitely used it. I've got three apps here that are that I've got running, I mean not running but uh, stored in my package explorer. So imagine that those are empty just like yours. There's nothing there. Here's what we want to do. Let's go to file menu new Android application project, the second item from the top. We can use Eclipse to create a variety of types of projects. In our case, since we have the bundled version from the Android development um, website, we have also uh, create new and Android application project. So select it. It's going to ask us some details about our Android application um, app name. For example, we'll say we'll call this my amazing app, whatever it is. Notice I use capitalization and, sp and uh, spaces and such for the application name. This is the name that appears below your icon on your app screen once you've installed it on a device. You can always put your, your mouse over one of these little info icons, this, these little blue info icons, and it says here, this the application is shown in the Play Store as well as in the Manage application list in... Set, uh, list in settings. Project name. The project name is only used by Eclipse but must be unique within the workspace. So it can't use spaces. Cannot use spaces. Notice it automatically wrote it for me. Remove the spaces. Package name. What's that about? The package name must be a unique identifier for your application. It is typically not shown to users, but it must stay the same for the lifetime of your app. It is how multiple versions of the same application, blah, blah, blah. You can read that. But basically, this is the name that is going to identify your application from the hundreds of thousands that are available in the Google Play Store. So notice it's a reverse domain format. It says com.example.myamazingapp. Notice the name of your application is added to the end of the string after the last dot. So that wrote, that was added for us. Very good. Next what follows is a domain name, a reverse domain name, example.com. Here we're getting a warning because it doesn't want us to use example.com. It wants us to use our own website. If you don't have your own website, just use your last name, com.campos.myamazingapp. Uh, com if you do have your own website, and it could be .net, .org, etc., add it in instead. So we'll say org.campos.school.myamazingapp, um, whatever. So give it a unique identifier there. The great thing about Android is that there's it's open source. It's um, it's it's out there for there to be different versions of it, different phones, etc. But the, the difficult part of working in Android is that because there are so many versions of Android out there, sometimes our app is not compatible with everyone's phone. So that's where we have these next items here. Minimum required SDK, target SDK, and compile with. We're saying we're going to support the minimum requirement of Android 2.2 and we'll support up to, uh, in my case, Android 18, API 18, and I'm going to use Android API 19 to compile or to create my app. In short, leave these defaults. They'll work just fine. They're going to be you're you're going to be able to target a whole range of devices here, so you're fine. You can select a theme for your application. I will leave the default because we're going to create our own theme later on. Next, it asks create custom uh, launcher icon, and we want this to be turned on. Yes, we do want to create our own icon. We don't want a generic icon. We want our branded icon. 
create activity, we have this turned on as yes as well. Uh, basically, every screen of an Android application is also called an activity. So we're saying, do we want to create our first screenful? Well, yes. So that's on. Mark this project as a library. It's a little complicated for us at the moment, but if we're going to reuse our project over and over as a library item, we can activate that. We do not need that yet. Create project in workspace. We can choose to save our project anywhere we want on any flash drive or hard drive or anything. The default is going to be in our workspace, which you chose when you first started Eclipse. There's mine. Working sets, don't worry about that just yet. So I didn't change anything. Next. Here's a spot where you would add the icon to your application, and unless you've got already your icons ready to be used, you're not really going to change this. Later on, we'll talk about customizing our icons because you're going to need a variety of them because there's a variety of devices out there. What we can do at least for the moment is let's try this. Click uh, on the foreground element text and now what we can do is actually add some text as our icon. Add your initials and now our icon for our app will have our initials. Where of course you can select a font I'm going to go with Black Oak Standard. There's my preview. Uh, I can do something cool like this. Under Shape, I'll select Circle. And now there's going to be a circle shape. I can change the color of the text, the color of that background. I can do a little customization here. <laughs> That's interesting. So you can you can create an icon. We'll create a better one later. Next. All right, since we've selected to create an activity, meaning a screen full of content, it asks, uh, what kind of design do you want? If we select blank, creates a new blank activity with an action bar and optional navigation elements such as tabs or horizontal swipe. Full screen creates a new activity that toggles the visibility of the system user interface, such as the status and navigation bars, an action bar upon user interaction, and a master detail flow, etc. We're going to keep the blank activity for the moment because, again, we're going to do this in a different way using HTML and such. So I didn't change anything. Next. In order to refer to each screen full, it needs a name, an activity name. So here, the name of the activity class to create. Uh, we'll leave the defaults. Again, you've got options for navigation. We'll leave these alone. We're going to create our own navigation later. So I did not change anything. And then we'll finish. On the bottom right corner of Eclipse, you'll see some activity happening. And then it's going to build the project, the default project. Eventually you're going to get something that looks like this, hopefully. Your screen just got a little more cluttered. What you'll see on the left is the name of your current application. As I said, I've got more than one, so ignore those, but I've got my amazing app. Notice there's no spaces. I've got a bunch of um, a bunch of supporting files in the center of the of Eclipse. Now I've got um, something to actually look at. I've got panels and sub panels and a preview interface. On the right side, I've got the outline. If I click on an object in my design properties, appear on the right side. And then on the bottom, hopefully you didn't get any errors. Now what we're currently looking at is an activity underscore main XML file. This is code, but the code is translated into something visual. You can switch back and forth between the visual and the code uh, views. 
at the bottom of our currently open tab, we've got sub-tabs, and then we've got graphical layout, as opposed to activity main.xml, which is our code layout. Switch to the code layout, and you'll see 17 lines of code get interpreted, translated into this visual. So we've created a basic Android app in Eclipse. Come back on the next video and I'll show you how to run this code in our virtual device.